In this lecture, we are going to talk about text access. In the previous lecture, we talked about the natural language content analysis. We explained that the state-of-the-art natural language processing techniques are still not good enough to process a lot of unrestricted text data in a robust manner. As a result, bag of words representation remains very popular in applications like search engines. In this lecture, we're going to talk about some high-level strategies to help users get access to the text data. This is also an important step to convert raw big text data into small relevant data that are actually needed in a specific application. So the main question we address here is how can a text information system help users get access to the relevant text data? We're going to cover two complementary strategies, push versus pull. And then we're going to talk about the two ways to implement the pull mode, querying versus browsing. So first, push versus pull. These are two different ways to connect the users with the right information at the right time. The difference is which takes the initiative, which party takes the initiative. In the pull mode, the users would take the initiative to start the information access process. And in this case, a user typically would use a search engine to fulfill the goal. For example, the user may type in a query and then browse the results to find the relevant information. So this is usually appropriate for satisfying a user's ad hoc information need. An ad hoc information need is a temporary information need. For example, you want to buy a product, so you suddenly have a need to read reviews about the related products. But after you have collected information, have purchased your product, you generally no longer need such information. So it's a temporary information need. In such a case, it's very hard for a system to predict your need. And it's more appropriate for the users to take the initiative. And that's why search engines are very useful today because many people have many ad hoc information needs uh, all the time. So as we're speaking, Google uh, probably is processing many queries from us. And those are all or mostly uh, ad hoc information needs. So this is a poor mode. In contrast, in the push mode, the system will take the initiative to push the information to the user or to recommend the information to the user. So in this case, this is usually supported by a recommender system. Now this would be appropriate if the user has a stable information need. For example, you may have a research interest in some topic and that interest tends to stay for a while. So it's relatively stable. Your hobby is another example of a stable information need. In such a case, the system can interact with you and can learn your interest and then can monitor the information stream. If it is, the system has seen any relevant items to your interest, the system could then take the initiative to recommend the information to you. So for example, a news filter or news recommender system could monitor the news stream and identify interesting news to you and simply push the news articles to you. This mode of information access may be also appropriate when the system has a good knowledge about the user's need. And this happens in the search context. So for example, when you search for information on the web, a search engine might infer you might be also interested in some related information and they would recommend the information to you. So that should remind you, for example, uh, advertisement placed on the search page. So this is about the, the two high level strategies or two modes of text access. Now let's look at the, the poor mode in more detail. In the poor mode, we can further distinguish two ways to help users, querying versus browsing. In querying, a user would just enter a query, typically a keyword query, and the search engine system would return relevant documents to users. And this works well when the user knows what exactly key, uh, are the keywords to be used. So if you know exactly what you're looking for, you tend to know the right keywords, and then querying would work very well. And we do that all the time. 
But we also know that sometimes it doesn't work so well when you don't know the right keywords to use in the query or you want to browse information in some uh, topic area. In this case, browsing would be more useful. So in this case, uh, in the case of browsing, the users would simply navigate into the relevant information by following the paths uh, supported uh, by the structures um, documents. So the system would maintain some kind of structures and then the user could follow these structures to navigate. So this strategy works well when the user wants to explore the information space or the user doesn't know what are the keywords to use in the query or simply because the user uh, finds it inconvenient to type in a query. So even if a user knows what query to type in, if the user is using a cell phone to search for information, then it's still hard to enter the query. In such a case, again, browsing tends to be more convenient. The relationship between browsing and the querying is best understood by making an analogy to site singing. Imagine if you are touring a city. Now, if you know the exact address of uh, attraction, then taking a taxi there is perhaps the fastest way. You can go directly to the site. But if you don't know the exact address, you may need to walk around, or you can take a taxi to a nearby place and then walk around. It turns out that we do exactly the same in the information space. If you know exactly what you are looking for, then you can use the right keywords in your query to find the information directly. That's usually the fastest way to do, uh, find the information. But what if you don't know the exact keywords to use? Well, your query probably won't work so well. You will land on some related pages, and then you need to also walk around in the information space, meaning by following the links or by browsing, you can then finally get into the relevant page. If you want to learn about the topic again, you, uh, you will likely do a lot of browsing. So just like uh, you are uh, looking around in some area and you want to see some uh, interesting attractions in uh, a related uh, uh, in the same region. So this analogy also tells us that today we have very good support for querying, but we don't really have good support for browsing. And this is because in order to browse effectively, we need a, a map to guide us. Just like you need a map of Chicago to tour the city of Chicago, you need a topic map to tour the information space. So how to construct such a topic map is in fact a very interesting research question that likely will bring us a more interesting browsing experience on the web or in other applications. So to summarize this lecture, we've talked about the two high-level strategies for text access, push and pull. Push tends to be supported by a recommended system, and pull tends to be supported by a search engine. Of course, in a sophisticated, intelligent information system, we should combine the two. In the pull mode, we can further distinguish querying and browsing. Again, we generally want to uh, combine the two ways to help users so that you can support both querying and browsing. If you want to know more about the relationship between pull and push, you can read this article. This gives an excellent discussion of the relationship between information filtering and information retrieval. Here information filtering is similar to information recommendation or the push mode of information access. Mm -hmm.